All right, let's have a look on how we can use the takeoff tool in the 3D Tiny House Designer. To use the takeoff tool, it's very simple. All you have to do is to click the button up here, which kind of looks like a spreadsheet, and this will generate your takeoff. Usually when you are doing your takeoff, you would have to go through the design and understand what the different parts of the design are. So for example, how big is the floor? How big is each wall? And let's say, what are the window openings? How much interior lining do you need? and so on. What we've done is we've created a tool that does that automatically for you. It simply analyzes the design that you have in the software here, and it then assembles all of that information into a smart spreadsheet. So I'm going to show you how that works. I'll just click the button here. We, I've got a little early access disclaimer here because the tool is currently still in early access. And then all it does, it generates a very detailed spreadsheet for me. So you'll see that pop up in the download folder up here. So I'll just quickly open up the download folder and I will see my takeoff document. So it exports into an Excel spreadsheet. So you can use this natively in Excel or you can also import this into Google Sheets or into any other spreadsheet software that you want to use. So I'm going to be using Google Sheets because that is my tool of choice. And I will just click on File, Import and then I will upload my spreadsheet here. So I'll just drop that in and wait until it is uploaded. There we go, I'll import the data. And there we go. So this is the spreadsheet that the takeoff tool generates. Um, just to get started, we have a little bit of information about the project up here. So you have the takeoff um, name, which is, <laughs> well, the project name of this uh, tiny house is called takeoff. Then you can add in your own information, like the, your contact name, your contact email, and contact phone number. Um, this will be helpful if you're using the takeoff um, spreadsheet internally. Then we have a disclaimer here to give you some background information on what to look out for when using the takeoff tool. And then we have some more tips and tricks on how the takeoff tool calculates the areas and items that are shown in the spreadsheet here. So just to get started, um, to have a look at the top here, um, we will start with the trailer info. If you are designing with a foundation, of course, this will not be the trailer info, but it will be the foundation info, but it just um, notes down the size of your base. And what you will see here, there are um, different parts to the spreadsheet. First, you will have the name, which just shows which item um, well, you are working with. Then you will see the dimensions. And if the item has a specific dimension, the dimension of that item will show up here. I'm using the metric system, but if you're using the imperial system, it will show up with imperial measurements instead. Um, and you will see the measurement here. So the measurement is the unit uh, or the measurement that the software has automatically calculated for you. So for example, what you'll see here, here's the flooring and this specifically here is the ground flooring. So all of the flooring that's on the ground floor and you will see 18.26 square meters as the unit here, um, meaning that is the automatic estimation that we've gotten. So what you can do now to take this further, you can go in and put in your own wastage and then also put in your own unit cost, meaning for example, in this case, the square meter rate, which will then automatically calculate how much the flooring on the ground floor, for example, will cost. So let's say we'll have a wastage of 5% like that. Uh, you will see that update automatically here. And I will say that per square meter, my flooring will cost $40. So that means my flooring on the ground floor is $766. So this is a super quick way to understand how much your flooring will cost but the same thing applies, of course, to all other objects and materials that are in this takeoff. So you can use this document directly, internally, um, to create your own takeoff, or you can just use the measurements that have been automatically calculated and estimated and import that into your own takeoff software, whatever works best for you. So if you want to then take it further, uh, you can also put in the supplier information as well as a link to the specific product in case you want to do that for your process. Um, but just to quickly walk you through all of the different categories that the takeoff tool currently exports, uh, I'll just quickly go through them one by one. So just to get started, of course, we have the base, um, which is either a trailer or a foundation, which just puts out what the size is. Um, and then you can put in the cost, of course. Then you have the flooring, and the flooring is calculated for both the flooring on the ground floor, any bump outs you have, um, any flooring that you have in the loft, for example. And then it adds that up um, to a total to understand how much your flooring will cost. Uh, then you've got the cladding. So it just takes the cladding from all four walls and assembles them into the spreadsheet here for you. And um, this is super helpful um, to understand, of course, if you have, let's say, 
different cladding on the front wall or the back wall, it's nice to have that separated. Um, and yeah, then you can just put in your um, cladding costs in here to calculate this too. Um, just as a quick reminder, you might have material accents that uh, run across the um, facade to break up the cladding that's currently not included. So you can just break this down in here and add a custom calculation in. So because this is a spreadsheet, you can also make changes to the spreadsheet. So let's say if I wanted to add a new unit in here, I can go in and say, I would like to add a row below. And then I can go in here and say uh, material accent one, for example, and I can put in my own estimation. So let's say this one here will be four square meters. And then I can put in my own wastage. Actually, instead of inserting it, what I will do is I will just copy this. Um, so I'll just go copy and then I'll insert it below and then I'll paste it in. And so this way we will keep the same kind of calculations uh, rather than if you create it by yourself, you will lose those calculations. So we'll just do, let's say um, five square meters here, for example, and then my unit cost for this specific um, feature here, uh, let's say we call it material accent one, accent one there we go and then we can put on a unit cost of let's say fifty dollars and then you have now added a new item so that's how you can add new items as well cool so i'll just quickly delete this one here and what you can now do um, you can keep going with your takeoff so we've got the roofing here the same of course applies for the roofing and as a quick reminder when the material is calculated um, it thinks about the whole uh, the, the cladding as a whole minus the windows and skylights or minus the doors of course as well so basically all of the cladding that exists so you might want to put in a little bit of wastage to allow for any offcuts that you have for building around those windows and doors and skylights then we have more um, more categories here um, which you can use to put in your own estimation. So you will see this little tag here that says insert your own estimations. Um, and let's say, for example, this is the flashing category. What you can do here, you can put in the, um, the calculations for all of your flashings um, to make sure that you can account for these as well. So our goal is to put in as many categories as possible. <laughs> so you can go in and make your calculations easier. So it's, you don't forget anything when you're doing your takeoff. And then we have a placeholder for framing here as well. So we will add this soon once we have our own framing tool. So you can also, um, yeah, automatically calculate the framing quantities. Uh, but for now, you can just put in your estimations for how much framing you need for the floor, the loft, the exterior walls and interior walls. And then we have the joinery here, which is the windows, doors and skylights, as well as the interior doors. Um, but so what you can do here, you can just in insert how much each component costs, of course. Um, and each window and door has a different number. So whatever ID you give it in the software, um, it will directly carry over in here so you can tell them apart. And it also shows you the size of each window and door. Um, so it makes it easier to understand which one's which. So let's move on to the interior components. So the interior components just analyzes basically the interior lining um, that you need for the interior of your tiny house. So it starts with the ceiling, um, then the loft undersides, and then also the interior walls. So um, the way that is calculated at the moment, um, all of the ceiling undersides um, are, well, the exact undersides of the roof. So um, if you, it doesn't currently account for the sides of the um, the walls that attach to the roof. So you will get a slightly larger automatic estimation than what you might need, but just uh, you can account for that as well. And so then you've got the interior walls here as well. And the interior walls work um, very similarly to, um, well, the roof here, for example, it just basically takes the entire surface area of the wall panels that you've used. So it also takes the sides and the tops. Um, so you might want to account for that in case you have a connection. Let's say the wall is connecting to a loft or something like that. It will still calculate the top bit of the roof um, of the of the of the wall here. So you might want to have uh, lesser wastage so you don't get too much interior lining. But it's a good starter to show you how much interior lining you need for every single wall panel. All right, so let's have a look what else is in here. So we've got the interior finishes. So this is a nice placeholder for uh, interior paint and any tiling that you might want to do. And of course you can also add in your own points by just copying um, a row and then adding it in to add in more items. Then we've got the insulation here. So the insulation is just the insulation for the floor, wall and ceiling and taking the, um, the area for that. So you can put in your own calculations for costs, of course here as well. 
And then we have the building wrap and sheathing. So this is a placeholder here, so you can put in your own estimations. Um, this is something that we'll add soon as well, so it automatically calculates this. Um, but yeah, so you can put in your own measurements for the floor, wall, and roof. And this one's super interesting here, that's the cabinetry. So what it does, it goes through every single cabinet that's in the tiny house and it just lists it down for you. And this way you can put a price to every cabinet and understand how much your whole interior design will cost. Um, and one thing to look out for, of course, if you're creating um, cabinets that are compounded, so let's say you create a storage stair that has multiple um, multiple units to create that one storage stair. Um, you will see every single component um, show up here together. But what you can do, you can just consolidate, let's say all of the cabinets that show up in a storage stair and um, just create one component and make it, you know, the price of that entire unit, if that makes sense. And then we've got the next option here, which is the appliances. So it just goes through the design and understands what appliances you have in it. So let's say you've got a gas burner in this one, an oven and a washing machine, and you can just put in your costs and also maybe a link to the supplier, um, as well as the link to the product. And then we've got the hardware here, which goes through um, mainly all of the cabinets that you have in the design and understands what the hardware components are, like let's say uh, the sink, uh, any vanity bolts, um, any kind of spouts you might have, as well as the cabinetry handles and um, drawer rails and hinges. And it just, let's say when you're calculating the cabinet handles, it would understand, well, well, what are all the cabinet handles in the design? This one's pretty straightforward, but for the hinges, for example, it would go through all of the cabinets and understand, okay, is this a right door or a left door? Is this a double door? Of course, if you've got a double door, you would need more hinges for that specific cabinet. And also how big is the cabinet? So it can understand, okay, if you have a tall cabinet, it will probably need more hinges for this cabinet than what you would have for a smaller cabinet. So it accounts for that as well to give you a good estimate of how, much, uh, how many hinges and drawer rails you need for this. Um, um, specific cabinet and then we've got the bathroom items uh, which are just any kind of uh, bathroom items that you would place into your bathroom so you can put a price to that and um, then you can also have all of your electrical components so in this design I've only placed one downlight so far but if you've actually done a full electrical design in there each electrical component will show up here and let's say if you've got multiple downlights this of course we'll say let's say six downlights or eight downlights so you can put a cost to it and then we have any other components that don't really fit into a category, they are in here. So like for example, a ladder. And then we have the plumbing category, which is just a um, estimate that you can put in to um, understand, let's say overall your plumbing might cost $3,000. Um, but once we actually have a plumbing tool as well, um, all of the estimates will show up in there too. And then this category here is for the labor and fees. So um, let's say if you want to note down the fees for your contractors or your subcontractors, you can put that in there. If you have any specific commissions you need to account for, certifications, uh, marketing, transport, profits, you can imp include that all in there as well. And once you have finished your takeoff, you will see this final calculations bit here. So of course, I've only done a little bit um, for now. So you will see a very small number. So this is a very cheap tiny house. Um, but once you have actually done the entire calculation, you will see a, um, a proper tiny house estimation in there. And then you can put in your own contingency. So let's say we'll have a 10% contingency. You can, of course, type in a specific dollar amount as well, if you would like to do that instead in here. Um, and then we'll have, let's say, another 10% margin on top, for example, um, and then it automatically calculates the subtotal. And then you can also put in your sales tax, so let's say 10%, and it adds that up as well. So you can understand how much everything costs in the end. Um, but yeah, so this spreadsheet here is something that you can use straight away if you are still doing your takeoffs in spreadsheets anyway. This is a really good template to do your takeoffs, um, or if you're doing your takeoffs in a another uh, project management software, you can take the, um, the automatic estimations and import that into your takeoff software um, so you can quickly put together your own estimates so you don't have to take out the ruler and understand, let's say, how big is the floor or how big are the walls. Um, so yeah, all of that is done for you and it gives you a good automatic estimation to give you a good preliminary um, idea of yeah, how, how many materials you need in your design.